was a good campsite. Oh, that was a nice campsite. Wish we had taken more pictures here. That was a good campsite. <gasps> Our first canoe. In my backyard. Okay, let's talk camping. <laughs> I really got into backcountry camping in the last like five or six years. Like ever since I met my boyfriend, now husband, we were always kind of going on day trips and then we kind of upped the ante and went camping together and started camping and it just kept going and going and going. It was always a common interest between the two of us and we've always kind of picked trips to push ourselves and to kind of expand our techniques and just experience like the area around us. We I got into backcountry camping mostly six years ago but there was kind of like a few things that kind of led me into like full-on backcountry camping working to be as light and as lean as possible when I'm out there camping um, finessing like my gear my food my technique how I choose what I'm gonna sleep in how I choose what I'm gonna wear all of that stuff kind of all comes down to these like formative years so when I was a kid, we didn't actually do backcountry camping. We did a lot of like car camping, like 90s car camping vibes, like family trip in the summer sort of deal. I'm sure there's like a lot of you out there with like the same similar memories. When like my parents would take us and maybe with another family to a provincial park, we'd stay the weekend, stay go to the beach, swim the lake, um, have campfires, like very kind of, front country experiences. And then when I was in high school, I ended up getting into the Ontario Ranger program. And basically that was when I got really exposed to that rustic backcountry tripping feeling where you canoe in, you carry all your gear, you don't have a cell phone, you have a sat phone. Uh, you use like A-frame tents and sleeping bags and like little like kind of like wannabe yoga mat feeling sleeping mats and packs and food and dehydrating and there was a lot of emphasis on conservation and the preservation of natural habitat and how to respect the wild as you when you go into it as a human. I went to Mink Lake and I went in the summer of 2009 and you couldn't take your cell phone. Uh, when you got to the camp, you basically gave them your cell phone and they took it away for the summer and you didn't really miss it. There was no internet, no phone. You had to walk to a pay phone um, and you could write letter mail out and you could receive letter mail and packages from your family and friends. That rustic feel with like the rustic, like not necessarily state-of-the-art gear, but like that specific scope of backcountry gear, I thrived in. I fell in love with it when I was like 16, Turn, I guess I turned 17 that summer. Um, but if you were in the Ontario Ranger program and you did backcountry canoe tripping, you'll know like this feeling. It's so, it was so formative for me and my appreciation for nature and wanting to get out there more often and learning and trying to replicate the trips that we had when I was a ranger. And then I never really got to backcountry camp as hardcore until I was done university. I went to university in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and that's in the Algoma district in like northeastern Ontario. And I got hugely exposed to that landscape and having like a, a societal culture around outdoor recreation, doing hiking, looking for waterfalls, uh, cross-country skiing, trail running. I My day tripping game really upped the ante that, that section of my life from like 2010 to 2015. Like every day off, every afternoon off, after exams, um, for study breaks, we would always like go on these like really beautiful day trips just to different wilderness places, all like on the shore of Lake Superior. Um, it's just so beautiful and I really like fell in love with that area. 2016 I went on my first camping trip actually with my boyfriend at the time. Um, my boyfriend at the time we had been on tons and tons of day trips and we both really liked the idea of camping. We were both early in our careers so it just kind of happened that we were able to 
get you know the gear we we wanted to start buying we wanted to have some time off and go camping so we actually started camping together in may of 2016. it was the long weekend and we did like a portion of the lake superior uh, coastal trail at the time we were like how cool would it be to like actually do the whole thing we thought it was super badass to do the whole thing and obviously the camping trip was a little like amateur we definitely had some very very unrefined techniques still really fun but i look back on like the stuff we brought the food we brought the gear we had at the time and i kind of like chuckle because we've really learned a lot since then in the last like five years and i'm happy that we even went on that trip because it kind of got us to where we are now we actually were long distance for a year and a half so he we lived eight hours apart i lived in Sault saint marie and he lived in peterborough and a halfway point was killarney provincial park which is kind of like the southern point of northeastern ontario uh, it's beautiful but it's very popular for like the tr toronto slash cottage crowd um we randomly went there together one weekend and we did like a little day trip a little camp a little a little crown land camping a little backcountry hike into a campsite it was still really fun and 2017 is when we decided to move to in together we moved to thunder bay together we got married and we started exploring like the thunder bay district so that's kind of like northwestern ontario we just used that time to explore all the areas around us just like we had done when we were dating and in college we got a little more ambitious and decided to do a full-on backcountry backpacking trip um, of the coastal trail. So where we started our first camping trip, we wanted to kind of do that again and do the whole thing and do it properly. And it involved so much planning and so much food prep and it was really our first introduction to like real backcountry camping. Um, so I really, even looking back on that, I think, wow, there's, I learned a lot that trip that I didn't necessarily know about, um, until I was kind of knee deep in the trip. In 2019, we went back camping again, May long weekend. We went to Point Grandine Park, which is actually on the way to Killarney. Later on that summer, when it was warmer, we did canoe the Barren River. Um, that was like a hike and a canoe all on the same day trip and it was really fun but I was seven months pregnant by that point and there was just not a lot I could do other than sit in a boat and walk like three or four kilometers at a time. We did a little baby moon where we ripped up to uh, Lake Superior really quickly and camped in Alona Bay just like on some crown land. But again, no real major backcountry camping that summer because I was pregnant. 2020 was like the most recent, well it was like last year, obviously. 2020 was a big year for backcountry camping. I went on, we went on, we did five camping trips. Uh, I was on mat leave so I had a lot of time off and my husband works every seven days for seven days so he alternates week on week off we took our son with us and we also did a camping trip again on the barren river that one just became like really fun it was just like something super doable it was i was able to incorporate family into it and um we just really enjoyed it so we put in at grand lake stayed overnight one night and then canoed to the camp the next night
We just wanted to take my son canoeing, so we wanted to see how that would work. Uh, it, it was okay, he did good, but it was like an experience. And so this year, 2021, you think, okay, I've done all these different trips in all these different parts of Northern Ontario. I think my ultimate goal would be to do like a, a through hike, like a PCT Appalachian Trail. Pacific Crest Trail. I think like in Canada it's the Pacific Crest Trail. And then there's the like Northern um, Appalachian Trail. Top three suggestions for channels that you should also follow are the Northern Scavenger guys. They're really good and they do some cool stuff. Uh, Foresty Forest. He's like a van guy. He like does all these summits in a van and he's really cool. Oh yeah, Justin Barbour. So this guy does a lot of East Coast stuff. So all those are linked down below. If you're looking for gear, I always suggest looking on lasthunt.com. It's a Canadian website that sells past season gear. It's affiliated with altitude.com and it's again past season discounted stuff that ships to Canada. My socials are Instagram, Facebook, and Strava. So you can find me on Instagram at msmaryy. That's my handle on Instagram. Uh, my Facebook page is Cheers from Aislin, spelled like this. You turn it on. Nico bit the camera and turned it on. What do you have to say for yourself?